of you that are interested can maybe try some of them if you're interested. I'll be going in alphabetical order, so we'll be starting off right now. And first up, we have Albania. Albania's national dish is called Tave Kosi. Tave Kosi. And it is a dish of lamb and occasionally chicken and rice baked with a mixture of yogurt and egg or soured milk added to a roux. I know that some of these words might not exactly mean a lot to some of you. Uh, for example, I myself still have no idea what a roux is, but as far as I've understood, it's sort of a thickener. Thickener, yeah. Uh, but hopefully it still feels like it's um, interesting, and the dish itself does sound interesting. Continuing on, we have Andorra with Escutela y Carne Tola, which is a combination of soup and stew with a gigantic meatball spiced with garlic and parsley. I have to say that I am not a big fan of meatballs and meatballs will actually be seen in at least one more of these, uh, but in any case they are still interesting in their own way and I know a lot of people that do enjoy meatballs. so. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, but yeah, continuing on, we have Austria with their Wiener Schnitzel, which, even if you don't probably know German, you can probably guess what it is, especially since Schnitzel is also an English word, or at least a word used in English. And it essentially is a Schnitzel made of thin breaded pan fried veal cutlet. And I've actually eaten it quite a few times, and specifically the time that I was in Vienna. But we also have a similar thing here in, in Serbia, so definitely a, a world-renowned type of meal. Continuing on, we have Belarus. We have Draniki, Draniki which is a shallow fried pancake or pancakes of grated or ground potato, matzo meal or flour, and the binding ingredient such as egg or applesauce, uh, often flavored with grated garlic or onion and seasoning. It's actually quite a common one, um, either pancakes with that are made from um, potatoes or something else like eggs and potatoes and similar, which is a fascinating thing and a fascinating connection between all of these different um, countries. But yeah, next up we have Belgium with more than just a single one. So some of these were um, unique enough or at least weren't official, so I decided to add multiple. And with Belgium, it's frites, carbonade flamande, and vata soy, vata soy, vata soy, uh, vata soy, so. I'm not sure how it's pronounced and which language this is specifically, since Belgium uses like three different languages and depending on the zone. So, um, but yeah, I think the first one is pretty self-explanatory. It's potato fries, as some of you may not know that French fries are actually not from France, they're from Belgium. And, um, after that, we have carbonade flamande, or carbonade flamande. It kind of sounds weird in English. But yeah, it is a Flemish stew, or that's how it's called uh, in other places, which is beef or pork and onion stew. And last, we have, last but not least, we have water soy, vata soy, uh, which is a soup base uh, of egg yolk, cream, and thickened vegetables broth with fish or chicken. Yeah, they're all interesting, but honestly, I think everyone's favorite is probably the potato fries. Um, and actually, they all three 
to seem interesting, though I myself personally am not a big fan of stews and like um, liquidy stuff, so I, can, I can't even judge in a sense unless I try it myself. So yeah. Um, next up we have Bosnia and Herzegovina with the Bosnian pot or Bosanski lonat. Uh, they also have the burek, which they pretty much share with Turkey. Uh, so Bosanski pot is a stew made by layering meat and vegetables, alternating between the two into a deep pot until it's full. It's usually not like a big pot, it's usually a pretty small pot. Um, and then adding water onto that, after which it's cooked. Um, but yeah, it's a really interesting concept in my opinion. Never tried it though, but I've heard of it. And burek, which is a very, a, a very popular general Balkan dish, is um, a pie made of thin flaky dough, such as phyllo with a variety of fillings such as meat, cheese, spinach, potatoes, and so on. Though elitists, burek elitists, yes, there's such a thing. Um, they're all around, actually. Uh, say that burek is only uh, with meat and nothing else is a burek, essentially. It's just a pie of sorts, which I disagree with, but I'm not gonna go into that or I'll cause the, the next Balkan war or something. <laughs> Yep, I'm pretty sure the next Balkan War will be about Burek and what th what you filled them with. <laughs> but yeah, next up we have Bulgaria with their Shopska salad um, or Shopska salata, uh, which I've eaten also, thankfully. <laughs> uh, it is essentially diced tomatoes, cucumbers, onions or scallions, raw or roasted peppers, siren, which is white brine cheese. Uh, and parsley with sunflower oil and vinegar dressing. It's spe usually specifically sunflower oil. Uh, if it's not, then it's like not as um, as close to the original recipe as it could be. But yeah, it is a, a really good salad in my opinion. Like, and I'm generally not a very salad type of guy. <laughs> but yeah, um, next up we have Croatia where we have the Zagorski Strukli, which is a dough and various types of fillings which can be either boiled or baked. It's actually a quite broad one and a lot of these actually are where it's just it could be a lot of things since they're filled in different ways and a lot of them are like very regional so it depends on where you eat them and what they with their own recipe sometimes it's even like a house thing like people do different things in their own household so yeah uh, but it's also a similar national dish is for slovenia continuing on we have the czech republic vepro knedlo zelo which is roast pork with dumplings and sauerkraut sauerkraut has somehow made its way onto a billion of these, like legitimately a billion of them, so you'll see this isn't the last time we talk about sauerkraut, <laughs> but yeah, it also, uh, the Czech one has an interesting name, it's basically untranslatable in a way, I mean it is, but um, I even know what the middle one means without um, researching it, but yeah, it, it's, a, it's a very unique name, not all of these have like these specific names that are only on the language, like some of them you heard, you can just say them in in English, basically. But yeah, continuing on, we have Denmark with Steigt Flesk, Steigt Flesk, and Smörbröd, Smörbröd, or Smarbröd, Smarbröd. Uh, I forgot how it's exactly pronounced, because I don't speak Danish, but yeah. Steigt Flesk is a fried pork belly sliced, sliced sorry, fried pork belly slices and is generally served with potatoes and parsley sauce. Uh, while smörbröd or smarbröd is uh, a piece of buttered rye bread topped with commercial or homemade cold cuts, pieces of meat or fish, cheese or spreads and garnishes. 
see yet another one that is uh, very dependent on the person or the gathering or just the area in in Denmark where they eat it uh, so yeah all of these are like that trust me like all of these can, are probably different depending on where you eat them which is of course a national thing which is exactly what we're, we're here for next up we have England with fish and chips and the Sunday roast fish and chips is pretty self-explanatory but I'll try and explain it anyway it's fried fish in crispy batter served with chips which is essentially french fries while a Sunday roast is roasted meat roast potatoes and accompaniments such as Yorkshire pudding stuffing gravy and the condiments such as applesauce mint sauce or red currant jelly yeah that sounds so weird i i have uh, when you say roast i only think of like salty stuff and then i hear condiments such as applesauce mint sauce and such and i'm just like how how does this work the germans also have this um sweet and sour or sweet and What's it called? Why not? Uh, sweet and salty. And I'm, I, we're in my own cuisine and in general my own taste. I don't really like the mix of the two, but some people do. There is one exclusion though, which is controversial once again. Uh, ice cream with french fries is for some reason actually good. Sometimes. Sometimes. But yeah. Next up we have Estonia with verivorst verivorst with or verivorst uh, which is a blood sausage a sausage filled with blood that is cooked or dried and mixed with a filler until it's thick enough to solidify when cooled it probably sounds disgusting to many many of you and i hope that your um, appetite hasn't stopped working now that you've heard that one but um there, there's actually worse um but yeah i've actually heard of before and i at the same time like yes when i hear blood i'm like no i i generally uh just like with steaks and stuff i don't like bloody meat i i, I don't want to eat bloody stuff but i don't know maybe this is different maybe if i tried it i'd have a different opinion but yeah next up we have the faroe islands which are a part of denmark where it, there is a national dish called skerpikut or skerpikut specifically made on the islands a very simple dish in like because it's not essentially a dish it's just dried lamb wind dried lamb uh, but yeah it's it's an it's it by how uh, people have described it described it it's quite different from something you'd eat anywhere else next up we have finland with rye bread and i'ma be honest when i was writing this this sounded like the most weird one in the sense of like everyone every other country almost has either a specific like dish or recipe for a dish or something and then you have Finland with just rye bread and it's literally just that bre bread made out of rye flour and it, it's kind of weird like you'd expect uh, or at least I would, I expected each country to either have something that is only specific to them as their national dish, or at least something that is more of a recipe, but here it's more just of a, a general food. No disrespect to Finland. It's just a, a weird difference from everything else that, that is here. Next up we have France with pot a feu, pot a feu which I've also kind of eaten just the Serbian version of it, uh, which is essentially a boiled beef and vegetables, usually served as two courses, the broth and then the solid ingredients. Um, it's actually something that my granddad used to make all the time, and we still kind of make it, rest in peace. But um, yeah, it was always, it was one of my favorites when I was a kid. I literally loved it so much. Uh, there's a slight difference, I think, but it's actually very similar. When I read it, I was like, ooh, I've actually been eating French food all this time. <laughs> but yeah, a really interesting one. Uh, next up, we have, as I mentioned, sau sauerkraut 
once again, and it is Germany with Sauerbraten, uh, which is a roast of heavily marinated beef, usually. And there's no actual sauerkraut, but it is sour. <laughs> uh, so I made a mistake. <laughs> but yeah, it is heavily marinated beef. Usually beef. It can be other meats as well. But yeah, pretty simple considering that, that Germany also has like, I think, four others uh, that were listed. But I think this one was like the official one, while everything else was just things that people count. Like there's also probably uh, Bratwurst or... or I don't even know, I forgot everything, <laughs> beer in general, but yeah, it, this one was the one that, that was like official, at least as, I, as far as I remember. Next up we have Greece with moussaka, gyros, and souvlaki. Now with this one I, I put three just because the official one is moussaka, but the other two ones are so popular and I've eaten them myself so I actually had a reason to comment on them further. But yeah, and moussaka is also something that we often make in Serbia. Moussaka is a casserole made with baked or pan-fried eggplants and potatoes, uh, while as well as tomato beef or lamb mince sauce and topped off with bechamel sauce. It's really nice, really, really nice. Uh, I didn't actually like put descriptions for the gyro, gyros and the souvlaki because they're usually pretty well known, but souvlaki is essentially uh, meat on a skewer, while gyros is a uh, meat, usually pork or chicken, with um, different condiments or different like vegetables and yeah, condiments as well as french fries in a, um, I don't actually know what it, in like, I forgot what they call it, pita, in pita, in a pita which is a, a type of um, bread or flat bread of sorts that's like foldable it's kind of like a tortilla in a way but yeah all three of these are absolutely delicious which is not often the case in a sense at least not in me i have spe quite specific taste buds but um i'm very picky yeah that's an, i know it's annoying and i find it annoying myself but yeah uh, continuing on, we have Hungary with the world famous goulash or goulias, uh, which is a soup or stew of meat and vegetables seasoned with paprika and other spices. It's usually quite spicy, and Hungarians in general are considered people that really enjoy spicy things. I've known quite a few Hungarians, so, and all of them usually liked hot sauces and similar. But yeah, goulash is also a very, very delicious food. Continuing on, we have Iceland with something that's written as Hakarl, but is pronounced as Haukach. I'ma just let that sink in. <laughs> but yeah, standard Icelandic. Um, and the, the actual um, food or dish is a Greenland shark or other sleeper shark that has been cured with a fermentation process and hung to dry for four to five months so like this one for this is something that I expected most out of like most countries something really unique to like the area for Iceland it's literally it's a shark that is that is at, uh, at the same time been uh, cured with a particular fermentation process and it's been dried for a really long time so it sounds like really different from everything else uh, but yeah, I, def I tried, I don't condone killing sharks, but um, <laughs> I don't condone killing any animals, and yet we still do it, so, uh, but yeah, I'm not a vegan. Uh, continuing on, we have Ireland. Uh, with Ireland, it is breakfast rolls, or, or actually, and uh, Irish stew. Breakfast rolls are bread rolls filled with elements of, excuse me, elements of a traditional fried breakfast so basically a sausage bacon eggs stuff like that uh, what's actually beans and other stuff while the irish stew 
it's actually like a sort of a hot dog of that so I find, find it kind of interesting I, I wonder what it would be like uh, what the Irish stew as I mentioned before not that big of a fan of stew still an interesting one though and next up we have the world famous Italy with pasta, pizza and risotto <laughs> I've listened to quite a bit of all three of these as I've watched a series recently with my family uh, of Stanley Tucci go, a famous actor going around Italy and eating different foods from each region so there was a bunch of all of these uh, but yeah, pasta is as you know dough of wheat flour mixed with water, eggs and then cooked pizza is a flat dough uh, topped with tomatoes, cheese and often various other ingredients depending on where you are but the original was essentially just flatbread, cheese and tomato uh, wow, risotto. Uh, one that w is act there are actually a million national dishes that are act there risottos or have some sort of rice in them. Uh, but it is a rice dish cooked with broth until it reaches a creamy consistency. And from a lot of experience, I can say that all three of these are delicious. In a sense, though, pasta is kind of a general term. You eat pasta with a lot of different dishes. Pizza is, of course, delicious. Risottos are as far as I've noticed, I've eaten like a million different types, and they're all really good. Uh, and pasta is great in a sense, though I personally can't eat a lot of it because it fills my stomach, and I've had stomach problems uh, when I eat a lot of pasta. But yeah, continuing on, we have Latvia with layered rye bread. And uh, you think thought that Finland was just rye bread, then you have Latvia with layered rye bread least it has something else so it's uh, a dessert actually it's actually it's actually quite different it's another Iceland type dish that's quite unique it's a dessert made from rye bread crumbs black currant or ling lingo lingon berry jam and whipped cream it sounds very interesting in my opinion though I've never eaten a dessert made of bread at least not actually I have actually no I haven't I haven't eaten a, a dessert but I have eaten stuff with like bread crumbs or something along those lines I'm not sure but yeah it does I, I'm very curious I'd like to try it someday continuing on we have kes 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 knuffle kes knuffle uh, which is a simple a fur, a fur Liechtenstein and it is a simple dough made of flour, eggs, water, salt, and pepper. Yeah, nothing much there, honestly. I When I tried to like find how it actually looks like and stuff, it, I didn't really get what it was, so you get the same explanation that I did. So not much to go off of. It sounds a lot like very basic bread in a sense, so I'm, I just don't know what else to say about this. For Lithuania, we have uh, Zeppelinai, which is potato dumplings made from grated and riced potatoes and stuffed with ground meat, dry cured cheese, uh, dry curd cheese, or mushrooms. Sounds interesting, definitely. Potato dumpling, well, that is a, a pretty standard dumpling, yeah, it's an interesting concept in my opinion. Continuing on, we have Luxembourg with uh, Jud Mat Gardebonen. I hope that's how it's pronounced, but it might not be. Uh, maybe it's Jud Gardebonen. <laughs> not sure. But yeah, it is a savory dish of smoked pork, collar, and broad beans. Once again, an interesting combination. And I think it basically means exactly that, smoked pork and broad beans, except in Luxembourgish. Next up we have Macedonia, with one of my favorite dishes in existence, and it is Tavce uh, which is white kidney beans baked on tava, which is a local type of skillet, uh, mixed with other vegetables, traditionally in an earthen it is extremely, it's an, an extremely tasty bean um, dish, and I've, I've actually been eating it for a long time, but I didn't know it 
its name because we call it differently in Serbia than they do in Macedonia but I don't think it's even exactly the same thing but uh, one of my colleagues uh, in college is Macedonian and when I asked her she essentially explained it to the same degree as the thing that I've been eating so it's it's just really good <laughs> but yeah uh, next up we have Malta with Stufat Talfenek which is a stew prepared using rabbit meat and potatoes, carrots, onion, celery, garlic, wine, and various herbs and spices. Uh, but yeah, it's essentially a rabbit stew with a bunch of stuff. Haven't eaten rabbit stew. Sounds kind of cool. Next up we have Moldova with mamaling, mamaliga, uh, mamatiga, mamatiga or mamaliga, I'm not sure. Uh, which is a polenta with vegetable stew usually eaten with something else now I'm hoping that you guys know what a polenta is because it's really hard to explain it's like a corn flour based it's not even a dough it's like it's kind of gooey I don't know how to explain it honestly it's polenta <laughs> check it out if you're interested but uh but yeah I've eaten it quite a few times but in this like type of combination never and um I can't really, I don't know, I don't expect that we usually eat polenta on its own or with yogurt or with milk, so it's quite different. But yeah, uh, next up we have Monaco with Parpaguan, uh, or actually it's probably in French, so it's par Parpaguan, 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 or something along those lines, <laughs> which is a kind of fritter stuffed with Swiss chard and ricotta, among other ingredients. So yeah, an interesting this dish. I like how it has a Swiss chard, uh, but it has a lot of ingredients that I actually haven't tried individually, so I can't really say how they would, they would even taste like that, and I especially can't say how they would taste individually, but yeah. Next up we have Montenegro with their Nyekushki Parshut which is a dry cured ham served uncooked similar to Italian prosciutto or prosciutto or prosciutto um, a lot of you or some of you have probably tried prosciutto pro prosciutto whatever <laughs> uh, it's really cool like it's a dried meat type of, of product uh, and yeah it's really good really good with the Netherlands we have stampot or stampot I'm not sure how it's pronounced, but yeah. It's a combination of potatoes mashed with one or several vegetables, traditionally sauerkraut, endive, kale, spinach, turnip greens or carrot, and onion, usually served with sausage. But this one was really interesting because you could like mesh it with one or several, so it was a really different type of dish for anyone and everyone that makes it. So it sounded really interesting to me. Next up we have Norway with furigul, which is pieces of mutton with bone, cabbage, whole black pepper, and occasionally a little wheat flour cooked for several, several hours in a casserole, traditionally served with potatoes boiled in their skin. Potatoes boiled in their skin can, you, can sometimes be really interesting, but yeah, the little, the little ladder of this of course i've never never eaten so it sounds pretty interesting to me as well and the name is also cool very good continuing on we have poland with bigos which is uh, better known as hunter's stew and it is uh, chopped meat of various kinds stewed with sauerkraut and shredded fresh cabbage as i said sauerkraut is everywhere it was in the last one it's in this one it was in that one before everywhere <laughs> but yeah uh, once again hunters do very interesting i hope that i get to try it one day next up we have portugal with cosita portuguesa which is a stew of cabbages beans potatoes carrots turnips rice different meats and smoked sausages once again interesting it's a very specific portuguese type of uh, dish i mean uh, by the name in itself and i found a lot of other portuguese dishes but i took this one since it was like the main one that basically 
basically everyone in Portugal knows and agrees on, while there were some other that some others that were more regional. But yeah, continuing on, we have Romania with Kivec and Mamaliga. Kivec is a stew usually made with only vegetables, up to 40 of them, 40 vegetables, while Mamalika is a porridge made out of yellow maize flour. But yeah, once again, 40 vegetables. When I heard that, or when I read that the first time, I was like, damn, that is a lot of vegetables. <laughs> like, I get, I'm, I guess that most, like, on average, this dish usually uses five to six vegetables. Some only use, like, three or so. But yeah, having 40 sounds like a lot. But yeah, that's probably why it's a, a national dish. Uh, next up, we have Russia with pelmeni, as well as too many other regional ones that I didn't want to say, like blini and such. Uh, blini. Blini. I'm never sure how it's pronounced. Uh, and it, uh, pelmeni is a filling, usually minced meat or mushrooms, wrapped thin, unleaved dough. Sounds interesting. Stuff with mushrooms is usually pretty tasty in my opinion. And blingy, I've eaten all my life and they're essentially pancakes and they're really good. <laughs> uh, but yeah, next up we have San Marino with torta tremonti, which is layers of waffled wafers that have Nutella or traditionally a hazelnut cream between each one and chocolate icing on the sides, topped with dark chocolate, cherry, gelato. I am so hungry for dessert right now after reading that, god damn it. <laughs> if you guys aren't, I don't know, that, that just sounds delicious, like waffles, Nutella, not that I actually don't like Nutella, but like cream, um, or like chocolate stuff, and um, chocolate icing, dark chocolate, cherry, gelato, and whipped cream. God damn, that is diabetes just calling me. But yeah, <laughs> next up we have Scotland with the actual most controversial of these, which is haggis or haggis. I'm actually not sure if it's haggis or haggis. I think it's haggis. But yeah, and haggis is a savory pudding. They call this a pudding, but yeah, a savory pudding containing sheep's pluck, which is heart, liver, and lungs minced with onion, oatmeal, suet, spices, and salt, mixed with stock and cooked, while traditionally encased in the animal's stomach. I've actually heard of haggis multiple times uh, in many TV shows and cooking shows and such, and I never knew what exactly it was until now, and I, I would like to forget. <laughs> I wouldn't, I mean, it's interesting, it's an interesting concept, concept but I, I, like, every time I try and imagine it, I'm just like, no, that probably isn't something that I'd like, and it probably has, like, a refined taste, something that Scottish people, because they've eaten for a long time, can eat more of, but for me, it's like, no, <laughs> but yeah, continuing on, we have Serbia, my country, with Gibanica, Karadjordjeva Schnitzla, and, or Karadjordjeva Steak, and sarma. So, kibanitsa is a... Actually, before I start, our actual official national dish is a type of barbecue called cevapcici and, um, and plaskavitsa, which are basically just types of barbecue. So, and we also share it with, like, our neighbors. All of our neighbors make basically the same thing. Uh, so I thought these three were more representative of the Serbian cuisine rather than, than just barbecue in general. So, kipanica is a pastry made with cottage cheese and eggs, which is just uh, essentially rolled into another in layers. Um, while Karadjordjeva steak is a breaded cutlet dish made with rolled veal or pork ste steak stuffed with kaimak or cheese and then breaded and fried. It I'm not gonna tell the story that, that I read about it, but yeah. While sarma is also something that we share with some of our neighbors, but it's also somewhat unique. And it is stuffed fermented leaves, uh, either grape or cabbage, usually one of those two, filled with rice and minced meat. And it's it can be really good, and sometimes it can be really bad. <laughs> because of how um, it's 
really sour at times and especially when made in grapevine it's extremely sour depending on how it's made but at least as far as I've tried it in grapevine it's a lot more sour than it is in cabbages but uh, we like stuffed stuff and sarma is the main thing though I enjoy stuffed uh, peppers a lot more than sarma but still it is a national thing next up we have Slovakia with Prinzove Halushki which is boiled lumps of potato dough and a soft sheep cheese sprinkled with cooked bits of smoked pork fat or bacon and chives uh, or spring onions interesting interesting it sounds interesting bits of smoked pork or bacon and everything else kind of sounds like it doesn't isn't very full of taste so i'm curious how this would actually have that taste specifically but yeah next up we have slovenia with buckwheat dumplings better known as strukli which is a dough with, with various types of fillings in the form of rolls the fillings can be apples walnuts poppy seeds cottage cheese tarragon and so on it's a, a bunch of stuff but it's and it's really good in my opinion at least next up we have spain with tortilla with the tortilla de patatas tortilla de patatas which is an omelet made with the eggs and potatoes and optionally onions i saw how, how the spanish make these they're really like interesting in the sense that um they they can make them into into like a like forms of art and it feels more like an a lot more like a national dish because they treat it like such like an art rather than just a food but yeah next up we have sweden with kutbular which is a small ground meat rolled into a ball sometimes along with other ingredients such as breadcrumbs minced onion eggs butter and seasoning and this is what i was talking about this is the meatball that, uh, that I was mentioning, so yeah, sweet. I didn't even know Swedish people liked meatballs so much, it's really interesting. Uh, continuing on, we have Switzerland with, next up we have Switzerland with Cervelat, or Cervelat, or, I'm trying, I'm actually trying to pick a language in which to say this, uh, Cervelet, or, if it's in German, I have no idea. Actually, it's just Cervelat, if you ask me. <laughs> Which is a sausage made with pork or a combination of pork and beef, mildly seasoned with mustard, garlic, and selected herbs and spices. So essentially a really interesting sausage. It also has an interesting shape. I wish I could show you. I might put it. I don't know. But uh, yeah, it's, an, it's very interesting. It's kind of a different type of sausage, but it's definitely interesting. Next up we have Ukraine with borscht and vareniki. Borscht is quite famous. It's a sour soup made with red beetroots. At least that's the default one that is most well known. It can also be made with plenty of other stuff. And vareniki, which is filled dumplings made by wrapping unleafed dough around a savory or sweet filling and cooking in boiling water. It's a center, essentially sort a sort of dumpling. It's also an interesting, but yeah, borscht, I really hope I can try one day. I usually don't like, like, soups and stew, but I'm curious how that would taste. And last, but not least, we have whales with col, with col, col, which is a hearty stew made of meat and any vegetables available. So it's essentially a very traditional one that they ate uh, when they didn't have a lot of stuff and when they kind of had to use everything up and so it's some it kind of like the same uh, principle of stir fries uh, but yeah it sounds interesting and that is that for europe guys i hope that you guys enjoyed it i will be continuing these series with different other uh, continents and i hope that you stay tuned for those and i will see you in those videos bye guys